Welcome to the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast with your hosts, Matt Wolf and Joe Fear. All right, we're back for another episode of the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. I am Joe Fear with my host and business partner, Matthew Wolf. Hello. And today <laughs> we have a cool call with um, Nancy, who we're going to we're going to talk about a lot of things. I think you're going to be uh it's a good balance call I feel like with uh we got a little bit of branding, we got a little bit of uh Matt likes to call it the woo woo, but I feel like it's <laughs> it's uh it's just daily living, so daily practices, mindfulness, reflection, but um we're going to talk about how branding actually is involved in everything you do in business and life and how that translates to getting more visibility for your, you know, for your brand, your personal brand and how this actually, you know, step by step kind of a three process thing that Nancy goes through. So, Nancy Marmalejo, you're here. Thank you for being with us and Thanks. uh how you doing? Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here. I'm happy to for, talk to you guys. For sure. Yeah. So Nancy is a uh, your buddy of AJ Roberts, previous guy we had on the podcast, good friend of ours. And um, yeah, he referred you along to pop on the podcast. So I don't think we ever thought twice of it. We're like, uh-huh. Yeah. Before you <laughs> even knew what you did. If AJ says this is somebody <laughs> you've got to talk to, then... Uh... We make it a point to talk to them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. AJ's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. So that's a no-brainer. So give us the the short, just to really quickly, and kind of like what you were telling me right before the call here, what you do, and um, then we'll kind of crack into some of these details. Yeah. Well, I teach entrepreneurs basically how to communicate their value, what I call their talent and genius, bringing up some of these unique hidden assets that we have. Mm -hmm. The three main areas that I love to talk to people about are their identity, like who you are, what you're all about, what drives you. Communication, basically how do we say that to the world so that people get it, understand it, and that they also feel that value. And then also on visibility strategies so that you Mm. can you know, position yourself out there as an expert, a thought leader, or somebody who is the um, best choice for people to buy from. Got it. Yeah. And that's sounds like a lot, you know, for people. So you, are you working with folks? I'm sure you've, I know you've worked with a lot of high class, you know, big, big name people and whatnot. But um, how would you, I guess, how would you break down, down this thing from the get go? Uh, one thing at a time there. Of the the three things that I work on with people? Exactly, yeah. So I call it reinventing your personal brand because a lot of people have been taught to follow this very, very structured formula. This is what you got to say. This is how you've got to show up. You've got to posture. And I'm not about (laughs) posturing. I'm about positioning from a very real, honest place. Because then uh, Mark Twain said it's uh, easier to just be honest because you don't have to remember so much. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) If you try to to be somebody that you're not, you have to constantly be watching over your shoulder. Somebody's going to find out that it's not really so. And so in reinventing your personal brand, the first thing that we do is just look at everything that you've been taught. We scrub the stuff that's not really serving you. Keep the things that are and bring in some, uh, maybe some new ways of doing things that really get you on fire to not necessarily, you know, get out there and promote yourself in this real bombastic way, but to just be so alive with what you're doing it's a it's just a contagious enthusiasm so you know, finding your true voice and yeah. yeah yeah and i call it finding your talent and genius it's mm-hmm. that real unique intersection of what you do how you do it who you are how you show up who you serve uh, you know i know that we're all everybody kind of um uh, teases people for being snowflakes right now or whatever but i'm <laughs> I'm just going to put up a little sign saying, you know what, snowflakes, you're safe with me because <laughs> deep down inside, there really is that, that quality in people. There, there is a very unique way that um, two people who have the same skill set can show up entirely differently based on their life experience, based on their personality traits, based on just some of their innate gifts. Mm. And so I'm just here to shine the light on that so you don't feel so lost in the crowd when you're out there. Uh, promoting your business and getting uh, clients. So what's like a what's like a one thing that someone could do right now that maybe they're maybe they're stuck in a business they don't enjoy or doing something they feel like oh, I'm just doing it for the money or oh, I just felt like I have to do this and and they're just not feeling quite right or motivated. 
Is there like a, I don't know if there's like a meditation or some question exercise they can go through? Oh, yes. That's a great <laughs> question. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Aha. Okay. So deep, deep down inside what I really, when, as soon as somebody starts working with me, um, you know, they might be thinking, come on, let's get to the message. Let's get to the branding. It's mm-hmm. like, no, well, first we're going to get to having a little bit of quiet time. This is a really a journey of self-awareness because if you're going to be talking about your strengths, if you're going to be talking about your genius, you have to know yourself well. Um, mm-hmm. And so I, I, it, I advocate for having a daily practice of quiet time, reflective time, time of contemplation. Mm. Now, there are a lot of different things that people do, that people teach, that, um, hold on a second, there's a plane flying over me, I'm going to just close this window. (laughs) Um, There are a lot of things that people, you know, say, you know, you have to do this mindfulness practice, or you have to do this meditation practice, or you have to do this, you have to do that. I'm not a fan of have to anything. Mm. I want you to want to do something. So I just say, you know, find 10 minutes first thing in the morning. Don't turn your phone on. Don't don't sleep with your phone on next to you and the first thing you do is you pick it up and <laughs> check your messages. <laughs> you know, turn that thing off. Turn the input off. <laughs> yeah. Turn it off. I I get up earlier than everybody in my house. I just need that quiet time first thing in the morning and I'll read something inspirational or maybe I'll jot a few ideas down. I might close my eyes and just get quiet for a few minutes. Sometimes I listen to something. Maybe it's a guided, you know, audio of some sort. But it's just allowing yourself that daily practice the same way that, I mean, if we have a half an hour to check our email, can't we have 10 minutes to just Google <laughs> something for ourselves? Seriously. Yeah. And, right. and what it does is it just connects you deeper into this level of self-awareness that you need in order to really want to show up in a genuine way and in a confident way. So, so before any you know, tips, tools, and tricks, I just say for everybody, it's really important for your business, for your brand, just for you as a human being to have some sort of chill time. So mm. basically, slow down. <laughs> yeah, like stop trying to do too much. Don't jump into things without thinking about it. Actually be mindful and aware of the actions you're taking be- maybe, you know, prior to starting anything in your day. Because obviously, yeah. we, I'm totally... I actually... Because I read an article yesterday that's totally related to this, where it's like, go to bed, uh, have so, have a question in your mind that like maybe you want to work on subconsciously throughout the night, and in the morning, first thing that you do is like jot down any thoughts that might have like you know just kind of brain dump, but don't pick up that phone. And I was trying really hard, and literally instinctually, the first thing I did was like grab my phone mm-hmm. without even thinking, and then I caught myself like a second, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, dang yeah. it, I'm already breaking rule number one. Like, well, you, oh, you man. put the phone in another room. That's, yes. That's yeah. one. And the other thing is, one way to avoid um, cheating yourself out of the benefit of this is don't start telling yourself, you know, when I make my morning coffee, it's like a ritual, and that's my meditation <laughs> time. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. When I've tried I'm, that too. <laughs> when I'm taking a shower, that's my meditation time. It's like it's you're you know you're doing other things. So if you can just have some dedicated time, maybe it can be more than ten minutes. Maybe you feel antsy after five minutes, so stay with five. But the the discipline is to just get yourself into this place of stillness. And I see people can get really uncomfortable just after one minute and they start judging themselves mm-hmm. like, oh, my mind is racing. It's okay. Just give it a chance. Give it give it 30 days and see how it goes. Oh, yeah. And then I like to set an intention for the day. And, you know, once you do this for a while, you, you don't have to really think about the intention. You just sort of ask yourself, okay, what's, what's the best intention for me today? And suddenly this word comes up like um, focus. Like, whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> you know, your intuition starts talking to you yeah it makes a huge difference for yeah. how you run your life and how you run your business yeah that's so that's so powerful too i mean i I've, I've noticed that you know when we run into issues like what joe was kind of referring to like oh man i'm stuck in this job i hate what i'm doing i don't like these these tasks i'm doing on a daily basis usually we figure out how to solve those kind of problems through that sort of silent reflection process, through things like oh, meditating yeah. or just, you know, going and sitting outside and being with nature and, and stuff like that. That's usually when the ideas on how to overcome that kind of stuff seem to come. Um, 
I'm definitely guilty of the whole cell phone thing, though. I keep my cell phone next to my bed, and the first thing I do is go, all right, what came in overnight do I have to respond to before I even get out of bed? So Ugh. that's... Uh, <laughs> uh, such a bad habit that it's we a, all have. It's a, a very bad habit, and uh, yeah. it's just kind of funny that, that I, I kind of know the solution to a lot of these things, but I still stay stuck in my bad habits. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe Nancy has some uh, <laughs> some more stuff for us to break through. I, I don't know. I'll just, if somebody in your house has to hit you. When they oh, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll tell his wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's carry on then. Um, so step two, or was there more to that step you, you think you could put on or elaborate on? On, well, now that's that's a piece of it. But once mm -hmm. you're in that space, then you can start going into that self-reflection. Yeah. What am I really great at? What is it that I'm doing skill-wise that I love, that charges me up? What are the skills that I do every day that I just really hate doing it? It drains mm -hmm. me. Um, what are the things that I've been good at ever since I was a little kid, these just natural strengths, whether it's creativity or being analytical? A lot of entrepreneurs, like, I don't know, you guys maybe, and I know myself, I, I love assessments. They're so much fun. You know, we can't hmm. get enough of finding out about ourselves. And after a while, you start to notice a pattern. Like, it's like, oh, there you go again. I'm a great leader. Or there I go again. I'm always creative. <laughs> and you start to see these trends and you realize, okay, that's a natural strength that I carry with me wherever I go. Yeah. So you have to just have that understanding of some of the strengths. Um, I have a, a process I'm going to teach you guys in a couple minutes and that'll kind of tie that together in a real tangible way too. Perfect. Cool. Well, let's, uh, do you want to get onto that or you want to keep going through each one of these, uh, these things here? Well, it kind of, it kind of is the second one. Yeah. So I might as well, I might as well crack into it. it. No, I love yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I know you guys love systems. <laughs> so I came with the, I came with my best. Yes. Um, one of the things that I notice, so the second thing that I help people with is communication. Mm -hmm. And communication happens in a lot of different ways. Some people think when I say message for your business or message for your brand, they're like, oh, good. Tell me my tagline. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, that's not what we're talking about. That's a tagline. And they say, okay, give me my elevator pitch. Yeah. It's like, that's not it either. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they forget that communication is a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And when we're communicating with somebody, it's not a broadcast, it's a dialogue. So the first yeah. thing, and this is something good that, you know, maybe people can doing step one and they're doing the daily <laughs> practice, you could just ask yourself, wow, where am I broadcasting and not dialoguing? Mm. That would be or, interesting. It's like when people are say like, yeah, I'm, I'm talking to these people today. And I know you're actually talking with those people. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, or talking at those people. Right. Like, yeah. Which is it? Yeah. So what I notice is that if you ever go somewhere where people are, you know, meeting each other and they might be a business setting and they say, oh, so tell me who you are and what you do. And then they, bleh, they mm. say this, they say something and then it just sort of lands. And then you say, well, what do you do? And they go, blah, and they <laughs> say their thing at you. And then you're both just kind of standing there. <laughs> you're like, what now? <laughs> yeah. And and the thing is, like, did you remember anything that they said? Mm. You know, if, if it's this very verbatim talking points. Um, or more importantly, do people just remember the gist of who you are? Very interesting. I just went to a mm -hmm. conference last week where I saw a speaker who is a brain scientist and she was talking about why when we hear a joke that makes us laugh and then we try to retell it, we have a really hard time trying to retell it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That is right. interesting. It's because what? we're trying to do, we're trying to recall a verbatim, like something that we heard verbatim, we're trying to remember it and repeat it verbatim. And our brain just doesn't work that way. Our brain can't hold on to the verbatim information, but our brain can hold on to the gist of something, the gist being just the general idea, mm -hmm. the, the more or less this is what it's all about. So if people can, if you, if you approach people with this overly structured message that's full of jargon or doesn't sound like natural language, People aren't going to remember you because it's so scripted. We can't remember that. But if they can get a hold of 
uh, what you're passionate about, what you are, um, you know, riled up about how you help the world, they're going to remember that about you. They might not remember word for word, but they're going to remember that about you. And what would you rather have people remember you for? Mm -hmm. it, you know, being impactful or having said something, but they can't quite remember what it is. So really you're going after, obviously you want to land your emotion, whatever effect you're trying to get, you know, with whatever your conversation <laughs> is, people are going to carry away with an emotion from that, from whatever that was. So that's why I like, yeah, with a joke, it makes sense because they were, they were just in the moment, they were enjoying their time, they loved the joke and they're like, crap, well, how did, how did he present that joke? <laughs> what was in, his inflection in the beginning or his pace or, you know, all that stuff. Yes, yes, so emotion is really important. And then also being able to help people visualize who you are when you're doing, and what you're doing when you're, working in your place of genius. Hmm. Now, the way that you do that is, I, okay, I used to, I, I have a master's degree in education, so I kind of come wow. in with, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in a little grammar at you guys, but um, <laughs> verbs are really important. So strong verbs, action words. A lot of times people introduce themselves or they're writing about themselves on their websites or they're, you know, putting themselves out there on a podcast or an interview, and they might say, um, I'm a blank. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm a, a name a typical uh, listener of this podcast. What might they be? A um, marketer or a entrepreneur or a small business owner. <laughs> small business yeah. owner. Okay, you know, I'm a marketer. All right, <clears throat> let's say that. Now, that's not really giving us an idea of who you are and what you do. Right. But if you have a strong verb that really describes your um, your genius, maybe you're the kind of person who simplifies things that are complex. So you can say, you know, I simplify marketing for, you know, people, blah, 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 businesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you're a person who designs um, funnels and things like that. Depending on who you are and where you're coming from, it might be I design funnels. You might say I engineer funnels. You might say I create funnels. Mm-hmm. Um, those are verbs, engineer, you know, using mm. the word engineer as a verb, design, create, simplify. We can actually get a picture in our minds of what that person's doing. And instead of saying, I'm a marketer, we now see them as a solution. Mm. Mm. I like that. Yeah, it's building that mental image, even if it's just slight and whatever that is, it's like, yeah, I craft funnels. You know, yeah, it's 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 oh wow, he's actually taking the time. He's doing this by hand, or he has a team and structuring things. Yeah. So stop thinking yeah. of yourself as a noun and start thinking of the verbs that come mm. before that noun. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Good. That's a good. That's a good summation of it. And so you have this. I mean, now what we've done is taken it from the verbatim, and we've gone into the, the gist. It's like now I want people to walk away, and all I want them to think about is there's that simplify or craft or engineer you know and mm -hmm. when you somebody who designs something versus somebody who crafts something versus somebody who engineers something they're going to come in there it's like ooh, craft mm -hmm. they're really you know detail and creative and, about it unique yeah. yeah all of those great things mm -hmm. so we've got all these different options so all of that being said everybody think of your favorite verb that describes you or go online you can just google list of verbs <laughs> You'd be surprised what's out there. Um, I'm advising people not to use empower only because it's been overused in a lot of areas and it's lost its um, teeth. But yeah. if you can find something that's really, really just um, like, oh, yes, I can feel that. Like what's in response to what people need that simplify is huge because yeah. we're such an overwhelmed world, you know. Uh, and, I, really good. and I would I would assume you want to search for for a verb that relates to the end result that these people might have or some objection that they might have before working with you or buying mm. your products. So sure. if it is something like, oh, it's complicated for you know for funnels or you know say if you're selling a product where they kind of do it themselves. You want to make sure, yeah, I simplify this with the training that I give you to, you know, it's, so, it's, like, so simplify would be a better. So uh, we verb. simplify marketing automation because mm -hmm. most people would see marketing automation is like a complex, overwhelming. Blah, wow, yeah. that seems like it must be hard. 
But if we're the guys who simplify it, right. then it sounds much more approachable. Yeah. Yeah. Simplify, demystify, mm. take the sting out. I mean, there's all sorts of fun ways you can do it. <laughs> so that's that's something. We'll that'll be called like next time we meet. We'll all we'll geek out on birds. Oh uh, yeah! Wow. <laughs> but I, there's a a three step process that I created that helps people put that into action. Perfect. And so I call this the love hate create message, and uh, put it out. Uh, I made it was so funny. I made a video about this in 2013, like on a Friday, uh -huh. and I put it on Facebook. And then I took my daughter to softball practice, and the next day she had a game, and I was like the dugout mom, and I was busy <laughs> all weekend long. I didn't go back to Facebook. And then I don't know, it might have been Sunday night or Monday morning. It's like, oh, I wonder what's going on with that that video. And there were like 300 comments, and oh, people man. were watching it. It's like, oh, I think that that, that we we found something people like here. So. <laughs> So I want to teach that to you guys. And then there's also a, um, a download people can get so they can get a little template for it and walk themselves through it. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, let's get through it. And then uh, at the end of the podcast, we'll tell them where to go get it. Cool. All right. So I call it the love, hate, create message. There's three different parts. Mm -hmm. Your dog likes it too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're excited. They can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So the first part is you you tell people what it is that you love about what you do and the people that you serve. You know, it's like, and, and you can use the word love or you can say, you know, what lights me up or what, you know, gets me up in the morning or what I'm passionate about or what turns me on, whatever it is. And then like you guys, let's, let's use you as an example. You know, it's like, what do you so what are y'all guys all about it's like man we love uh simplifying marketing automation mm -hmm. for people blah 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 so they can blah 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 mm -hmm. all right so you put that passion in there that's the first piece mm -hmm. and so this is that emotional part that you were talking about yes yeah all right so it's an emotional hook it's like wow you know and you say the language that works for you like not everybody's gonna want to say i love you know you might want to be more bro about it or whatever you want. <laughs> I freaking dig marketing. <laughs> I, I, I get stoked on marketing automation. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> it, it, whatever fits. Yes. So I'm not one to censor. Uh, That's good. So the, the second part, though, is really cool because the second part gets to set you apart as um, a contrarian and a true advocate to help the pain and suffering of your ideal client. Hmm. So you find, you think about how they're not, how your ideal client is not being helped by what's out there. Um, the dead ends that they keep hitting or the mistakes they keep making in hopes of solving this problem. So like what's a, what's just an awful typical worst case scenario of people when they come to you to learn about marketing? Uh, they probably, I would say the worst thing is over complicating things unnecessarily. That, okay. right. But, but an, some, what? somewhere out there, they're getting overcomplicated because mm -hmm. they're so, like, there's so many different options to choose from. They're probably mm -hmm. picking this and picking that, and they're just, like, you know, banging their head up against the wall with every single solution and nothing's working. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So then you guys can say, maybe you guys are the type of people who would say what pisses me off or what, you know, what mm -hmm, drives me crazy, mm -hmm. drives us crazy is, is seeing, you know, these, these great business people who are spinning their wheels. They keep trying all these marketing things that don't work. They're banging their head up against the wall and it's getting them nowhere. Hmm. And it's just like, ah, you know, it's heartbreaking mm -hmm. or it just like, you crazy. You could be so much more, but <laughs> these guys have ruined it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So in this part, you really just genuinely and authentically connect to like the frustration people are saying. It's like, God, I can't stand. You know, it's like when I teach people messaging, it's like, you know, I love teaching people how to communicate what they who they are and what they do. So they get more business and they get more clients. And it drives me crazy when I see people doing these like templates and formulas and <laughs> talking like robots because nobody talks that way and nobody's going to respond to them. It's a script. Yeah. Rather right? than being genuine. Right. Yeah. And that's actually my, that's two parts of my love, hate, create. So the last part of it is now you step in as a solution person. You step in as a change maker. You say, so I've created 
you know, and then you name what you create. You created a marketing system. You created a marketing class or a program or a podcast. Um, you created a business. You created a movement mm -hmm. to help people solve this problem. Mm. So you put those three pieces together and then you have this really cool way of um, – of putting uh, all, of piecing these together. So so let me give you an example for sure. instance. All right, this was I have a couple. Um, all right, here's one. This is just kind of like I'll start with like kind of plain vanilla. This is from an from an accountant. Cool. Okay. All right, so this person says I love helping small businesses who are in big growth phases. What drives me crazy is how many business owners come to me stuck in accounting systems that they don't even understand. Mm-hmm. Any business person who's ever had somebody set up an accounting system is like nodding their head going, oh my God, I don't even understand. She says, so I created a program where I collaborate with my clients to build custom accounting systems that meet their specific needs. They get the answers they need in the click of a mouse because I translate the accounting gobbledygook into stories and pictures that they clearly <laughs> understand. I love it. Yeah. So when she goes out and gives talks, she introduces herself with that. She can put it on the homepage of her website. She uses it in her social media profiles. And when people associate, like, who is she and what does she do? She's like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. she's. Sends them that. <laughs> or, or that's her line. Yeah. Yes. And, um, and that creates, like, a, such a good mental image now. And, and it's, like, instantly relatable. Because it's like, oh, they get me. They've been in my shoes or they they, they know what I've been through. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let me give you another one. Okay. Um, all right. So this one is from a veteran uh, marketer and uh, online business person mm -hmm. who was taking his decades of marketing um in one certain niche and bringing it over to another. He wanted to help people develop um, their businesses in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so he said, um, I get fired up teaching. Okay, teaching is his power verb. All right, just mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I get fired up teaching coaches and consultants to change the way they do business so they can make more money and live a better lifestyle. That was his love part. Okay. All right. And then his hate part, he says, but I hate how so many are still stuck in the cycle of exchanging dollars for hours, tiring themselves out, working really hard at a failed business plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's he's like p poking the stick in the cage a little bit. Just oh, yeah. The, right, right. the more time they put in, the less they get out. You know, that it's just like – these are things that people confess to him, you know, not necessarily publicly, but he knows the pain people carry around. So he's able to say that in his message. And he says, so I created a roadmap that puts coaches and consultants in the fast lane towards the money and the lifestyle they deserve. And then the conversation goes on, you know, to explain further what that roadmap is. So he, he mm -hmm. brings that right into a product offer. I would say like, yeah, this message can be used. I mean, everywhere like yeah. like you know in a talk you could be in any webinar that you create or sales video oh, yeah. i was thinking the same thing i'm thinking like this message that you create this is your now your you know your linkedin bio your facebook USP. profile your like it's kind of the thing you post everywhere so people know exactly what you stand for and what they can learn from you yeah, I have a number of clients that use LinkedIn. Some of my uh, corporate clients, they're using LinkedIn to advance their careers and they're getting, you know, contacted by recruiters. They're being noticed by, you know, higher ups in their own companies. I have speakers who use this um, when they do their talks. I also have uh, clients who are doing big uh, product launch formula style launches and they use this type of languaging on their videos and you know the part of it is like it's not it's not one of those remember it's not like this verbatim thing you just like if you can remember what is it that you love what is it you hate and what did you create in response to mm -hmm. it even if you switch out the words and it's not exactly exactly that's okay but the when somebody hears you with this kind of message they're going to remember the passion that you have for what you do. Mm. They're going to hear you as an advocate who really understands the pain that they're going through and they're going to see you as a person who has a solution. Mm. I think it's 
it's just so, and I'll be short here because I think you have an idea, Matt. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I I know from like personal experience, if you just try to over script things or over prepare, I'm we're not fans of prepare over preparing or really preparing too much for talks, like because we do like monthly, um, we present to a, a monthly marketing group, hundred people or so. And, you know, our talks could be about 20 minutes long. And we have a general idea of what we're going to talk about. Slides are prepared and they're good. But when it when it comes to speaking, it's like, okay, I'm not going to say this exact line. You know, it's we have the essence of what we're going to do. And I think right. we can perfect it even more with this this uh, three-step part, you know, thing here. But, um, like, if we over script, like, on a webinar... It does the emotion doesn't come out as much, mm -hmm. and and we know that from just trying to record these things and present. We're like, oh, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta let it flow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. So yeah. that's I, I just I just want to free people up to have real conversations and not to be walking around with this billboard persona on them and and just yeah you know every everybody goes out there and says you know very cliche like be yourself just yeah. be you be the best you it's like well if you don't know who you are it's really hard to be <laughs> you <laughs> yeah yeah no I mean th so. this little f framework would be perfect for like your about page or something if you've got a blog this is like a perfect framework to to start to outline what you would put on that about page I know a lot of our listeners are actually bloggers and stuff too so I wanted to, mm -hmm. to just mm -hmm. kind of add that in there but um, I actually have a, a question and this might sound like kind of a weird question because it's coming from my very analytical technical <laughs> brain but um, see what I have to deal with over here <laughs> <laughs> my, my question is is how do you know if you're you know your your little um you know I, I don't know what you call it but your 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 three part um you know saying presentation that you come up with how do you know if it's if it's effective or not or if it's something that needs some tweaking because i'm very much like a, a i split test everything i like to see numbers i like to know what's working and what's not working and something like this i have a hard time conceptualizing okay that is the right sort of three phrase process or you know phrase, what i'm getting yeah. at i'm kind of like is there a way to know that that, that we kind of nailed it or or anything like that yeah, there, there is. I, I like your analytical self and the questions you're asking. It's good. Well, okay, so I have had clients who want to go rogue on me and they're like, I'm going to change the order. And I was like, why are you changing the order? <laughs> you know, and they change the order and then they say, gee, it wasn't effective. It's like, okay, thank you for the data points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, they want to start off with the pissed off part. It's like, then you're going to be that angry person in the room that everyone's going to want to avoid. So that's, start that's off true. with passion. So I just, you know, what I do is I change everything up all the time. I wouldn't take the same thing and put it on every single platform. I'd, I'd play around with it. Maybe use I help people. Maybe it's I teach people. Maybe, you know, I, did, I love demystifying. I, you know find it exciting to demystify, I get charged up myst demystifying, you know, whatever it is, you play around with some of the words. One of the best things you can do is, I think, is using it in a talk. So if you're on a video, if you're giving a presentation in person, if you're doing a webinar, just do this and feel into how it, how it feels for you. Um, people will understand you in a better way and it's not as boring as the regular old bio. It's got an unpredictable element to it. And I think because of the middle part, that hate part is right in the middle, that can make people smile and cringe in a really good way mm. uh, because they identify with it. And when you get to that place where people can identify with something, there's this micro yes that's being said in their mind. They're saying, yes, I relate to that. Yes, I feel that. And when somebody starts to say those little yeses to anything that you're saying, they're going to, you know, say more yeses to you and, and build that no like, and trust factor. Maybe they'll say the big yes to you and, and buy from you. Yeah. So it just definitely paves the way. But I would recommend trying out different lengths, different verbs, different words, different formats, different elements of humor, different elements of emotion. I wouldn't use anything that's sappy or feels, you know, doesn't feel genuine. Mm -hmm. um, I had some people who were in um, more of personal development field that would say things like, you know, I love, you know, whatever, you know, hugging 
teddy bears or whatever it is. It's something, you know, f- warm and fuzzy. And then they'd say like, and it tears my heart apart when I see people, you know, suffering through this endless, you know, and it's like, wow, we're really sad now. It didn't work. So d- keep it light, keep it impactful. Uh, don't make it like sappy. And then I just, you just try it out. Oh, man, it's, the teddy bear approach was my go-to. I, I, got, I got to change go my back crap. to the drawing board. Shit. <laughs> no, I know you wanted that teddy bear so bad. I did. I did. <laughs> this is good. No, this is this is like a lot. My mind's just kind of like, okay, how can I apply this? <laughs> so, like, sorry, go if, ahead. If I can just share one more thing. When oh, I, of course. When I, so when I put that video out and it started going all around the place and then I've done some webinars and things teaching this, mm-hmm. I have found out... No, it's it's kind of taken a life of its own. And I get these letters from associations and networking groups and professional organizations. And they said, we just heard your love, hate, create message. And now we're having everybody in our group, when they have to introduce themselves, use that. Mm. And everybody loves it. So it's helped a lot of people escape the dreaded elevator speech and so I just wanted to add that in. There's just a lot of versatility to it. And yeah. I like I like it when people get creative with it. But I, I recommend you keep the same order and just because psychologically it hits in a certain way. That makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Matt, do you want to ask your question? Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> we, we, we have just a, a couple little wrap up questions that, that we ask everybody who comes on. Um, and the first one is, do you have any books that you recommend or you find yourself reading over and over again, or, um, you know, just, just some good book recommendations. They can either be on the topic we talked about today or completely off topic. It doesn't matter to us. Just, we want to point people in the direction of some, some good reading material. Oh my goodness. I'm always reading a book. I'm, I'm re I have, um, I have like five books that I'm reading right now. And I just bought three books at a conference. 100 oh I can't remember Sarah Cooper wrote this book it's called like it's a kind of a parody cartoon book it's a hundred and way hundred ways to appear smart in meetings or something like that <laughs> um, it's these cartoons that are just ridiculously <laughs> funny I always recommend the big leap by Gay Hendricks I think that's a fantastic book it uh, helps people have this understanding of what we call their upper limit uh, and yes. it talks about the zone of genius which is a big um, a big you know thumbs up for me. Mm -hmm. I always recommend that people view um, Brene Brown's TED Talk on the power of vulnerability. If you have not seen that, it's about 15 minutes. It's going to change your life. Mm. It's pretty incredible um, when the way that she talks about vulnerability and bringing that topic to the forefront, I think has helped us in our quest to understand ourselves and understand others. And I'm always reading something reflective of, um, you know, something that just I can start my day off with something really um, nice and mellow. There's this book mm-hmm. called The Book of Awakening by an author named Mark Nepo, N-E-P-O. Mm-hmm. And uh, what I like about it is he's not a motivational speaker and he's not a life coach. He's actually a poet. And he had cancer several years ago, and uh, it changed his life. It changed his perspective on the world. And he wrote this book that's got these daily reflections that are just absolutely beautiful. Hmm. Not not preachy, not too hard to understand, but just really reflective. I like Very it. Cool. And that's what's really interesting is our our podcast that we recorded before this was a he recommended a separate book but it was another daily kind of get your head straight just a mindfulness type book where you check in every morning with that book and i think that's so powerful we're seeing it's kind of like a trend we're seeing on this podcast (laughs) you know those daily readers are really good for helping to create a ritual in your life and so that's what i recommend when somebody wants to you know how do i start with a little chill time in the morning it's like well get yourself a daily reader even if it's just short or it can be one of these longer ones it's i mean there's ones that have religious and spiritual themes there's Mm -hmm. humor there's motivation there's just about everything yeah awesome very cool do you want to hit hit her with that that question of so, yours? So um, the final question. <laughs> so you mentioned uh, people can go and get a download of your um, your your process. Where can they go to get that? They can go to talentandgenius.com. Okay. All spelled out. Talentandgenius.com forward slash 
sample dash well dash hyphen message <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's, i wish it was easy i wish it was like you know <laughs> One, two, three dot ABC. <laughs> well, we will I, definitely link to it below in the show notes. Yeah. So anybody listening to this can easily click the link over to it. Are there any other um, resources or websites or social media accounts or anything else that uh, you want people to check out about you? I'm all over the place. So if you put my name, uh, Nancy Marmolejo, and if you can spell it correctly, that would be great. <laughs> M-A-R-M-O-L-E-J-O. Um, if you just pop that in uh you can find all my social links probably through google or if you go to talentandgenius.com that's my main website there's all sorts of social links there there's a link to my podcast there's blog posts there's a free resource called the genius finder um, i have a book on personal branding there's all sorts of great resources so if you um if you come into my world, I'll take good care of you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, and I didn't even, we didn't mention this, but congratulations on your Golden State Warriors. Oh, go. hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of dominated just a little bit. <laughs> they kind of dominated the entire playoffs. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm a diehard fan from my childhood when wow. I played CYO basketball in Catholic school and they took us to Warrior Games. So it just makes cool. my heart sing when I see them win. And um, um, yeah, we're all very, very happy. <laughs> well, on that note, it was a good time, Nancy. <laughs> Thanks for being on. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff we can apply here. So, we'll yeah, probably... thank you so much. Yeah. So, check her out, and uh, we'll talk next time. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Hustle and Flow Chart Podcast. Now, if you don't know already, myself and my partner, Joe Fear, every single week we put together this killer weekly newsletter that's completely free. If you go to theweeklyprofit.com, you can get on this weekly newsletter. And what we do with this newsletter is we scour the internet. We read every piece of content, listen to blog posts, uh, check out new software and tools, and we distill down the best of the best into a weekly newsletter and deliver it directly to your inbox every single week. So head over to theweeklyprofit.com and make sure you're signed up to receive that weekly newsletter. You're going to love it. Thanks so much again for listening to the Hustle and Flowchart podcast. We'll see you in the next one.